Okay. We want to be respectful of race time, so we'll start on time at 6 p.m. Um, I see we have about uh, three members of the public present, and we do have our public works director, uh, Tanya Moron, as well as uh, our Kinley Horn Associates representatives, uh, Howe, Mike Woodward, and Chris. Um, we're here to answer any of your questions tonight, but what we want to do is present uh, the 45% plans for Old Dirt Main, um, which is um, what we're looking to do is uh, pave it from 2nd Avenue all the way to the canal. Uh, in addition to that, we do, as I said before, I have Mike uh, Woodward on from Kingley & Horace, which is, he can work, has been working with us on the Ward Trail, uh, which phase one is going to extend from north all the way up to Wintermere Elementary School. Uh, that does include a new bridge over the canal. The bridge will be wide enough for golf carts. Um, once people get over the bridge, then they're going to be directed back onto uh, Old Dirt Main for golf cart access. But then there's going to be a 10 foot wide trail system that's going to wind through the Old River right away uh, to allow for pedestrians, uh, bikers, strollers, so on and so forth. Um, and with that said, I will go ahead and turn it over to Hal, who can go ahead and present the plans. Um, as I put in the chat box, um, please hold all your questions until the very end. Um, if you want to raise your little hand icon, we'll get back to you as far as any questions or um, suggestions that you have. And also in the chat box, if you want to go ahead and uh, put in some of your questions. This meeting is for you, the residents. Uh, this is for us to get feedback from you as far as what you like, what you don't like, um, what issues you may see with some of the designs of the conceptual designs. Again, it's 45% plans, has to go to town council for approval, and then we'll come back with close to 100% uh, plans um, and bring it back to the public as well. So if you have like a special tree, if you say, hey, listen, there's a drain field over here, or there's a certain issue that you've consistently seen as far as drainage, we would love to hear from you about that. Uh, and as I said before, with that said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Hal. Thanks, Robert. So as Robert mentioned, this is for uh, paving old Main Street from 2nd Avenue uh, to the canal. And uh, I'll start off at 2nd Avenue and I'll just kind of go through the project with you to show you what we're doing. And then if you have any questions, any concerns at all, you please voice those after I go through uh, the corridor and we can definitely look at those areas and address any concerns that you may have. Uh, we also showed the proposed ward trail, which is a separate project, but we went ahead and go ahead and showed it on the same exhibit so that you can see how it looks in relation to Old Dirt Main. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit more detail. So um, the project starts at 2nd Avenue and just as the tile says, it's paving Main Street. So we are, uh, we are removing the existing dirt road and the existing sidewalk and providing an 18 foot wide asphalt paved roadway. So just a couple of things for you to look at is the existing sidewalk uh, to be removed is the green hatching. And then the existing dirt road is kind of that red cross hatching that you see here. So our, our goals for developing this alignment was to minimize impacts to everybody's property uh, frontage on the west side as well as avoiding things like this large tree in this um, northwestern corner here, which we do avoid. Um, as you come through here and you see these red dimensions, uh, these dimensions are from the existing uh, sidewalk. So that would be the existing west side of the sidewalk. So uh, John, I believe, uh, went out and painted these out in the field, like these offsets, so that you can see where the edge of the back of the ribbon curb for the roadway is going to be. So those dimensions are just some field dimensions that John used to, to paint those out there so that you can take a look. Um, so we tried to hold the existing edge of dirt road as much as possible, uh, basically where the, you know, a lot of residents have those wooden ties as the edge of your, um, of your driveway. And like we see a railroad ties here. So we try to stay, we try to match the existing dirt road and the ties as much as possible. The dirt road does meander uh, quite a bit. So, you know, we can't meander the paved road as much, but we did a best fit line and we tried to basically have the road as, uh, you know, as far east as possible so to minimize impacts to your driveways and property. Um, the, gray, um, the gray solid shape that you see is the roadway and uh, the the other line right here is what's called a ribbon curb, and a ribbon curb is just a flat a concrete curb that's about one foot wide and it's flush and the road is all going to be pitched 2% towards the east away from uh, these properties and we're going to catch all the runoff with a type F curb and gutter, 
which is the standard curbing that you see on most roads. It's got the curb gutter in the face, and then it's going to be caught with inlets that's going to be conveyed to the north. Um, the areas that you see um, with the kind of the magenta gravel is just the harmonization of your driveways as we go through and we, we pave this road through here. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pan through here. So as we go through these properties here. Oh, if I can just interject sure. a little bit. <clears throat> what the red lines are indicating is, um, again, the delineation between the right-of-ways, uh, mm -hmm. the property that's owned by the town and property that's owned by individual property owners. Um, some of those are on the call tonight, maybe some of those property owners that we're currently in negotiations with, but we have um, acquired um, three of the five properties through contract. And we just have two that are outstanding right now as far as working on contract language or working out some details with the property owners. But um, we feel very confident that we're able to, going to be able to acquire those last two uh, because we are shifting everything to the east. So it's giving them what they perceive to be more property. Um, and we're also going to be including some water lines along the west side of Old Dirt Main. So um, they see the benefits in that. And also we're going to be you know, working to extend the ward trail all the way to interconnect with the Baptist Church um, sidewalk system. So I just wanted to add that there's still two outlying parcels, but we do feel confident that we're going to be able to acquire those with similar contracts that we have with um, the Hart property, the North property, uh, the singers we've discussed with, and also uh, the Masseys. We're still trying to coordinate with the Denoyles. Great point, Robert. And just, just to kind of build on what Robert stated, uh, this is the existing uh, western right-of-way line for the town, which corresponds to the eastern property line uh, for these uh, residences. And this is the current right -of eastern edge of the right-of-way for uh, Old Dirt Main. And then this is the right-of-way. This is the property that uh, Robert's talking about the acquisition for in order to shift this road to the east. And, and as Robert stated, in a lot of areas, the road will actually be a little further than the existing dirt road uh, adjacent to the properties uh, through here. And we do plan on coming in and putting a water main right at the back of curb as part of this project. Okay. Um, at First Avenue, we're paving the returns, and then we're going to stop there in those areas here. Um, and then 18 foot consistently throughout with a 2% pitch towards the, the curb and gutter. I'm going to go on to the next sheet past First Avenue. And so on this sheet here is North. And at North Avenue is where the, the uh, trail project starts. And so over here, you can see like this kind of grayed back uh, line work with the light brown hatching. That is the alignment of the trail. And the alignment of the trail, similar to ro the road, is going to be within this right of way area, the old railroad right of way. And it's going to uh, it meanders to avoid trees, uh, uh, you know, as much as possible. So as we go through here, uh, the edge of the pavement of the road is about where the edge of the existing sidewalk is. So that edge is right there. And then we just kind of follow the existing edge of dirt road through here as much as possible through here. And then we're doing a lot of our um, you know, it's not really widening, but the wider uh, footprint of the road, 18 feet, um, all of that is to the east, so the road doesn't get any closer to the residences to the west. And the trail continues through this area here, right between paving Main, Old Main Street and then uh, Main Street over here. Okay. Just, a, as we just a quick to... note about the alignment of that trail is it's generally going to be along the old railroad berm. So if you're familiar with the area, it's, it's, there's a raised up area. And for the most part, we're gonna stay on top of that berm. As Hal mentioned, there are situations where we're going to uh, maneuver around trees to keep those in place. Thanks, Mike. And then um, at the very end of the project, we do taper down to match uh, the existing driveway at this property location matching the existing width of the driveway um, you know, at the, at the brick wall that's out there. Now, um, we, we designed this project um, so that it can be constructed prior to the trail project if needed. So what it is is that here where you see in blue is where we're going to reconstruct the sidewalk 
and then we're going to tie into the existing sidewalk, which is this green hatching here. So uh, with, with, uh, with paving main occurring before the trail, what you would have is you would have a new sidewalk connection to the asphalt pavement. You would have the existing sidewalk along here, and you would utilize the existing uh, pedestrian bridge, which crosses the canal. So our project effectively ends you know, just south of the canal. What we have provided at the end of the run is this spreader swell area here. And this swell area will be uh, gradually graded, and it'll be sodded, and it'll just be a depressional area where we can provide a little bit of water quality treatment and a little bit of, a little bit of storage before it gets into this ditch bottom inlet. And then we connect it to the existing uh, pipe that outfalls into the canal now. So this will provide some water quality in this area. Now, when the, when the trail is constructed, the, uh, the, uh, a new connection will be made at the wider width to, um, to uh, um, Old Main Street. And then this sidewalk connection here, as long as the existing sidewalk and the existing ped bridge will be demoed. And then there will be a new bridge across the canal that continues uh, north. Now, when that happens, that means that this area here where the green hatching is, that area is going to become available because the sidewalk is going to be removed, no longer needed because this will be the access route for pedestrians and golf carts. And uh, this area, then th that means that this um, this swale area here can be expanded uh, into this uh, old sidewalk area as well, providing even more storage and water quality uh, for this area. And the roadway uh, storm surge system that I was talking about that collects the runoff from the road all being pitched to the east gets into this last inlet here, and then it discharges into the swale. It stages up a little bit into this structure, and then it discharges into uh, the canal. Uh, and we, uh, we uh, and so that's the current design that we have. And so with that, Robert, I'm, I'm open to questions or comments. Yeah, thanks, so. And again, we do have Hal, Chris, and Mike from Kidman Associates to answer any questions, as well as our public works director. Um, one of the main reasons that we focus on this area, and again, you know, this is not a beginning of us paving all the roadways in the town of Windermere. Uh, we have to implement selective paving, um, which I think all of you that live on this little stretch now, it becomes a mud bog, even when there's no rain. Um, when people leave their sprinklers on or something else, uh, we pretty much have a lot of water that's retained on those roadways. And that is a major point for kids to get to Windermere Elementary School. And I would say probably about 90% of the time, the sidewalk is either under dirt or underwater. Um, so we have been able to acquire some uh, federal earmarks, about $760,000 to uh, build the bridge and put towards phase one of the ward trail. In addition to that, we're looking at state appropriations through Geraldine Thompson's office, and we are looking at receiving money from the West Orange Healthcare Alliance. Uh, we've been working with them for quite some time. We have a follow-up meeting in mid-November to hopefully see how much they're going to be putting towards that. Uh, the surface of the trail will be concrete. Um, we looked at asphalt and other types of materials, but uh, concrete seems to be the one that uh, everybody's going with and it's easier to maintain. I think it's a lot easier on the trees as well. Um, and we have been working with the certified arbors to make sure that we avoid all or any and all tree impacts that we possibly can. And there will be a swale system on the east side of that um, concrete 10-foot uh, trail. Sometimes it'll be on either side, uh, but also on the West side, we're gonna make sure that we add additional landscaping. So those of you that live adjacent to the Ward Trail, um, again, we're gonna work with you on the type of landscaping and you know to make sure that you guys are not sheltered from it, but it's gonna look more aesthetically pleasing than it does now. Is there a reason? Out of curiosity, out of curiosity, the bike trail or like this trail here, mm -hmm. concrete seems to me like it always pitches and heaves and makes it really difficult to ride bicycles on. Is there a reason why? I mean, is it actually easier to maintain than asphalt? I believe it's, I can have Mike answer that, but I believe it's more aesthetically pleasing as far as having a black asphalt area. Um, and then also with the repair and maintenance. Um, yeah, I might go ahead and address that. Yeah, and another point is that once you get north of the canal into the area that's that's heavily wooded right now, and um, again, the plans that we're looking at right here stop right around 
where we're looking now. Um, but for constructability, once you get into this area, it'd be it'd be difficult to get an asphalt paving truck in that in that zone. So um, constructability was one of the main drivers for for selecting concrete as the as the pavement. Yeah, and a lot of times too, you know, when you do look at like the West Orange Trail, so on and so forth, as far as a lot of the trail systems, people that are on those really expensive bikes or really diehard bikers, they'll be on dirt or not dirt main pavement. Um, they'll be sharing the road and not necessarily on these pathways, even though we'll encourage them to do that. Uh, the majority of them will still be on McGuire Road. And yeah. we're, uh, we're going with a six inch thick concrete and that thickness provides a lot more structural integrity and as well as would pre prevent some of the some of the, the the shifting after it settles in. Yeah, agreed. Wait, just one more quick question. So the mm -hmm. um, these are two totally independent projects. I understand. When when are we looking at for the paving project of Maine? That's to be determined once I'm able to acquire the remaining two properties along um, between Second and First whether that be through just a contract or it's through eminent domain, which we definitely want to avoid. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's just when I acquire those two because we do want to take care of that mud bog. We were trying to make sure that I was in line with the current project that we're working on with West Second Avenue as far as the um, uh, resurfacing and stormwater improvements on that roadway. Uh, yeah. So we would like to get them out at the same time. So designs are due probably in December. And again, this one is not through an HMGP grant. So it's at our own timing of when we're able to do it. Um, right now, it's hard to get contractors and pricing is going up. So uh, that may have a, a factor in it as well. But the sooner the better, especially with the fact that we're looking at getting some federal grants for the bridge itself. I know the bridge will probably uh, go in maybe before the, the trail system, but that's still to be determined. Mm. And okay. Robert, Robert, this is Tanya. Someone was mm -hmm. asking why we were using curbs instead of swales and how you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we need to move <clears> this water quickly to where it needs to go. And so we need the curbs to move that along to the appropriate um, stormwater system it needs to get treated at. That is, that is true, Tanya. The, the curb provides a very efficient way to convey that water so that you don't have the same ponding and flooding that you currently do. And also the area of the burp, the area between um, between um, Dirt Main and uh, Main Street is actually burned up. It's a lot higher, so there's not a feasible way to grade a swell without cutting into those slopes and and disturbing, impacting all those trees. So that's why we went with the curb and gutter section uh, through here in order to preserve all these trees and not have to cut into that mounted area. And plus, we could not fit the trail and the paving Main Street if we had a swell in between just the elevation through here is too high with the berm. But we do understand that water quality is important and that's why we're maximizing the swale area through here. And then we're gonna maximize it again once the trail comes in and we can remove that portion of sidewalk. Now real quick, because a lot of people don't understand the difference between a F type curb and whatnot, is F type curb the type of curb that you can park on or is it one of those like four inch high tall curbs? So a type F curb is, is a six inch high tall curb and it's not mountable. So, I mean, you could park on it, but it's not comfortable to park on it. So it's a vertical curb face is what we're proposing. So something similar you'd see in an HOA. Yeah. So, so on, on the west side, it's really on the west side, it's really just, um, it's uh, called a ribbon curb. So it's a flat concrete curb that's one foot wide, but it's flat and flush with the asphalt. And that's really just to hold that asphalt line so it doesn't fluff off over time. So that's gonna be flat through there. So it'll be, it'll be comfortable for the driveway access. The only, the type F, the vertical curve is just on the east side where we don't have any driveways. Okay, yeah, that's one of the things I wanna point out is that the people that are used to maybe having their landscape trucks pull up or deliveries and or friends or family members, they're still gonna be able to drive up onto that curb area, it's similar to what they can do on West Second Avenue. It's just the east side is going to be that six inch tall curb that you're not gonna be able to drive upon. Also, it's going to assist with hopefully safety on the war trail. Yep, but this will be all flat through here. So you could you could drive through there if you needed to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, should there be a turnaround at the north end of Old Dirt Main? We looked at that, maybe doing a hammerhead or something like that. I just don't think with the 
area that we have that's going to be uh, that we're going to be able to do that. How, if you want to address that? Yes, I mean, in order in order to do a hammerhead, we would have <clears throat> to provide it somewhere in this area, which means that we would be impacting trees as well as this property here. It's just not a lot of room there, and so you know that that was that that was not something that we were looking at just because of both property impacts, tree impacts, and impacts to the proposed trail. Right, and you have about five homes right there. So, you know, the trucks are used to going in and backing out whenever it comes to those trash pickup. Um, so I don't think that's gonna be a really big issue. All right. um, if you wanna raise your hand, use the icon or ask any questions in the uh, chat box, we're more than happy to answer any of your questions. Remember this meeting's for you, so um, don't hold back. Um, I have a question. This is Joe Cole, uh, two, mm -hmm. tw uh, 225 Forest Street. Um, are there any other paved projects uh, in the works in this vicinity, or is this the only project that you that you have going right in this area? West Second Avenue is the only paving project, and then again, okay. that's just resurfacing and um, redoing the stormwater systems. Um, First Avenue, when I talked to Mrs. Hart, she said that, you know, there were some rumors that we were going to pay First Avenue, and that's not uh, anything that we're looking to do or widen that roadway. Uh, and also, there's some apprehension about the acquisition of the railroad right away from some of the private property owners to actually four lane Main Street. Um, I like my job. Um, and if I were to ever propose that, I would not have a job. And I don't think town council would ever go for that. And you see a lot of municipalities holding back or holding the line and actually widening roadways and actually restrict, restricting those roadways just to two lane facilities. You saw that with Winter Garden actually restricting, I think it was Hartwood Marsh to two lanes and then actually lowering the speed limit to 25. So that's nothing that we would ever propose. The second avenue is the only one that we're looking at doing a resurfacing. Um, we are looking at the Bessie Basin area and the Butler Basin area, but Again, town council has held the line on making sure that we maintain and keep our dirt roadways. This one was just an anomaly because again, it becomes a mud bog from uh, West Second Avenue all the way to the canal. Great, thank you. How are the driveways, oops, sorry. <clears throat> How are the driveways married up to the street? Can pavers be extended or will it be asphalt? Um, so we were gonna we were going to match the existing um, material of the driveway. So if you currently have a gravel driveway, we were going to replace it with gravel, and it would just be a minimal amount of distance just to harmonize it with the asphalt pavement. Uh, we made our best efforts to match this west side as much as possible from an elevation standpoint. So our plan was only to um, to match the existing material that's out there with any driveway harmonizations. Um, another question was, since this is no longer a dirt road, can a town rename the old dirt main to West Main so people can find people who live on the road home, also named Main Street? Uh, that's something that we would have to check with Orange County 911 and also talk to the residents about too, because changing an address is more than just changing the name of the street because you're mailing, mailings, deliveries, driver's license, so on and so forth, and also 911 addressing. So we'd have to work with Orange County on that, but I can talk to Brad. All right. I'll so this, this is Ashley Rumble, 30 Main sure. Street. So um, just to kind of wrap up, I know, I know I asked about timing, but so you're still, you're, you got to acquire two pieces of right away. And then that could be a month or six months. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, so there's really is no actual timing on this yet. I'm looking to start probably summer, fall of next year. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So, because okay. again, if we were at some point, we're just gonna have to move forward with, you know, again, for those two outstanding parcels, uh, uh, eminent domain, you can do a quick taking or you can go through the core system. Right. Um, you know, it, it all depends Hopefully on that. It works. But 
Yeah, we, we believe that it will. We've had open dialogue with those people that own properties between second and north, and a lot of them have been receptive to our ideas and involving them in the process as far as um, working with them on some of their concerns to make sure that they have all the information that, you know, they need to make an informed decision. But um, we're offering everybody the same exact price. So nobody is, um, you know, if they're a holdout, they're going to make more money or anything like that. It's just, um, you know, we established a price when we purchased the ward trail and we're sticking to that price. Um, the federal earmarks that we get or any earmarks that we do get from the state or probably, uh, uh, healthy West Orange, we're probably going to have to work within some timelines. So um, that may speed things up. But again, with the bridge, I'm hoping to do that by summer or fall. Um, and while I'm working on the acquisition of those properties, we're still working on 45% designs to 100% uh, designs, as well as working with Orange County Utilities on having them approve the um, waterline designs. So it's not like just, you know, we're waiting on two yeah. properties. We're still working concurrently and consecutively with everything to make sure that we're online and on par with what we believe our timing should be. What do you, are you just upsizing the main to better serve residents or what's the point of the new main or just old? So, so uh, there currently, so there currently is not a water main uh, running along um, um, old main street. So um, with the Second Avenue project, there's going to be an eight-inch main that uh, that stubs out right around this location right over here, and so we're just going to extend that eight-inch water main uh, up through here, and then I believe at North Avenue it becomes a six-inch main just because there's less residents to serve as we go up, and um, we're just going to be putting uh, the mains in there and we're gonna provide a, a lateral to the property line. And then uh, I think Robert, I think is up to the property owners to connect you know, at the property line for that water main. Yeah, one of the questions is, do we have a util or water uh, master utility plan? We do. Um, we've submitted to Orange County Utilities and we just have to work on some additional hydraulic calculations for them to accept it. But they've taken uh, this project, West Second Avenue, Bessie and Butler, out and looking at it specifically as far as, you know, can they provide service and, you know, are they, are we providing adequate pressures and flows, which we are. Um, so we'll be putting in some fire hydrants as well, but we're, our intent is to go ahead and make sure we sub out to the property line. So if and when you want the service, um, then you just have to pay for a meter and have your plumber go ahead and um, take you off a well and then hook it up to potable water. Got it. All right. I'm going to keep it open for a minute and see if anybody else has any other questions. All right. If you think of another question that you just didn't ask tonight or you just may be shy, uh, what you can do is email me um, and I'll make sure I get it to our uh, engineers. For those on main water, what is the impact? So you're already on uh, Orange County Utilities. There will be no impact. Um, there may be a disruption of service like for a little bit um, because once we switch over to the different lines, but we are upsizing the lines on West 2nd Avenue as well. Again, it's making sure that we have enough fire flow protection all the way down West 2nd Avenue and wherever we do um, our water projects. <clears throat> All right. I see no hands up. I will bid you adieu and you, everybody enjoy your night tonight. Hopefully the Bills win big tonight so my fantasy football team does well. <laughs> um, Again, if you have any other questions, please feel free to email me and we will post this on YouTube. So if any of your friends, neighbors, uh, or family want to take a look at this, um, they can go to our YouTube channel. In addition to that, we have actually posted the plans on our website as well. So if you have trouble finding it, uh, just give us a call or shoot us a, uh, an email. We'll make sure that you get these plans. And then the next step would be to take it to town council for 45% approval and then take it to um, you guys, again, once we get closer to that 100%, and that'll be with the ward trail as well. So uh, thank you for joining tonight, and um, that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Good night. Thank you.
Yeah, great. Thank you. Bye-bye.